Welcome to QDS Design Studio 101. This tutorial video will cover the basics of the Design Studio starting with an overview and continuing to learning about QDS elements and response types. Next, we'll do a brief overview of calculated variables and cover different branching options using skips, edits, and marker elements. Finally, we'll review how to finalize your survey for administration by using build options and testing features. A demonstration of the preview tool will encompass all of the topics covered. A listing of QDS support resources is available at the end. First, a brief overview of QDS. QDS is made up of a system of modules. For survey design, you'll use the Design Studio module to program specifications and produce survey documentation. There are several data collection modules, including ACASI, CAPI, Data Entry, and QDS Web. All of these are used to administer surveys and produce data files and optional reports. Data management is conducted with the Warehouse Manager module and data can be exported from there to many different software formats. This tutorial video will just focus on the Design Studio. To get started from the Windows Start menu or Apps view, depending on your version of Windows, go to QDS 5.0, Questionnaire Design Studio 5.0. To start a new questionnaire in the Design Studio, go to File, New from the menu, enter a file name, and navigate to the location where you would like it saved. Note that Design Studio files will always have the extension of .qds. Then click the Create button. When the new specification windows opens, you'll notice that it starts with an empty list. The only item is an end of elements flag. As you build your questionnaire with different types of elements, they will appear here in what is called the element listing. Note that the window bar shows file name and current language. All questionnaires must have identifiers specified to uniquely identify interviews, so this is something you'll always need to set up. These are also used to identify duplicates in the Warehouse Manager and name data files when unique file renaming is enabled. By default, QDS assumes you will have at least one identifier variable that is named subject, but that name can be changed. They can be text or numeric type. Identifiers are defined in the Design Studio under Options Interview and then go to the Identifier Variables tab and enter variable names in the Subject ID and optionally in the Additional ID Variables field. All QDS specifications for your questionnaire are built by using different types of elements. For example, all questions are added as data elements. There are many other types of elements including information elements, skip instructions, edit elements, automatic variables, marker elements, section headers, format elements, report elements, and common elements. For those types not covered in this tutorial, you can look up more information in our QDS online help resources. To add a new element, you can select the desired type from the Insert toolbar, or you can use the Insert Element button, Edit Insert from the menu, or the Control a keyboard shortcut. Then, you'll select the type from the New Element pop-up window. 
Data elements are used for questions and so are what you'll use mostly in creating a questionnaire. They always require a response, write out data, and optionally include an image. You must always specify both question text and a response set and they are black in the element listing. When adding data elements, you'll see several tabs with possible options. Most of these can remain at their default settings. However, you'll generally only enter information on the data element tab, which is where you start, and the response set tab. In other words, the first and the last tabs. The middle tabs can generally be ignored. On the first tab, which is the Data Element tab, you must enter question text. Note that if you need to add a hard return, just use Control Enter. Next in the Response Type drop-down box, select the type. In the Variable Name box, enter a name up to 32 characters, and then in the Label box, enter a label. That'll be included in the exported data set. The question numbering will be automatically updated by QDS. Note that you should always ignore the branch to box as you should always use skips and edits to control branching. As mentioned, then you'll need to go to the last tab, which is the response set tab. And here you will define ranges and response options dependent upon type and define which special codes are allowed. That is, don't know, refused, or not applicable. You'll notice for all response types that there are branching options available on this tab. However, in general, you should always leave these at the default settings. Instead, you'll use skip instructions or edit elements to control branching, and we will be talking about that later in the webinar. Next, we'll take a look at different types of response options. First, for questions that anticipate a yes or no response, you'll use that type. By default, 1 equals yes and 0 equals no. Beneath that, you'll want to check or uncheck to allow or disallow special codes. And as mentioned, you should leave all branch options at default settings. Another type that is very common is number. The key options to set here are an optional tag, which can provide an on-screen label for what's being entered. For example, times, number of people, or pounds. It's only for display and not saved into the data set. You'll always want to set minimum and maximum values that make sense for your question. And finally, as for all response types, set whether or not to allow or disallow special codes and don't use the branching options for this type. For questions where you're asking respondents for a rating, you can use a rating scale. Labels are only required for endpoints where you enter the anchor text, for example, worst possible to best possible. You'll also indicate allowable special codes. And finally, for this type, you'll also want to specify some additional options, such as having a horizontal versus vertical scale placement and to set how the label should be placed. We also recommend checking the Require OK box so that the next question button must be pressed to continue. On the Capier ACASI screen, this type is shown as a line with labels on the endpoints. Responses can be entered by clicking on the line or by entering a number in the box. In order to label intermediate scale points, you must use a numeric rating scale response card. We'll talk about those next. Another frequently used response type is date. Here, you will want to set in the components box whether or not you anticipate collecting a full date or just year and month or year only. 
In general, it's best to leave the format at a four-digit year and again specify which special codes to allow. Then, even if you have selected to collect a full date, you can still indicate that missing day or missing month is allowable by checking those boxes. And finally, you'll always want to specify the earliest and latest date allowable. This can be a very broad range, such as January 1, 1900, to a date far in the future, or you can also indicate current by putting the word current in the box. Note that this is then taken from the computer date on your device. The save data for date type variables is not like that for other types we've looked at so far. For dates, you'll have multiple variables saved for each question. The full date is called the composite variable. The month, day, and or year are called the components. And it's important to note that in the save data set, the full date or composite variable is listed in order of where it is, and the component variables are always listed at the end. This will be true for all response types that have composite and component variables. The way composite and component variables are named also differs from other response types. The composite name is always the name from the data element tab, variable name box, such as date in this example. And then the components have a letter suffix added to the end, for example, date M for month, date D for day, and date Y for year. Note that these are only created for collected components. For example, if you have a month, year only date, you'll only have date M and date Y you would not have a variable for day. On the other hand, if you have a date question where you have allowed one or more missing components, such as allowing missing day or missing month, then in the exported data set, the full date variable will only be a valid date for dates without missing components. However, you must use those year, month, and day component variables to create valid full dates in exported data, such as using your programming and analytic software, such as SAS, SPSS, or STATA. Time span response types allow the collection of a length of time. For a question such as, how long have you lived in your current residence? This is particularly useful because you can collect all three components on a single screen, such as years, months, and days. QDS automatically calculates the total amount of time based on all entered values, while also saving the individual time components. On the Response Set tab, you can select up to three units of time, from years all the way to seconds. And just like with dates, you can indicate if missing units are allowed. You can also select the single unit value that QDS will save as the automatically calculated total. For example, a total of two years, one month, and zero days would be converted to 25 months. The minimum to maximum range you enter is based on the unit, such as months in this example. Just like date type variables, time span items are made up of the composite variable, which is the complete response automatically converted to the value unit. As with dates, it uses the variable name as entered on the data element tab, for example, SPAN. However, it does include the values of any missing components. And there is one component variable for each unit that saves the individual values and then appends a letter for each type, such as span Y for year, span M for month, and span D for day components. For questions where respondents will choose a single response from multiple options, you'll use a pick one response type. You have the option to display these choices as buttons on the CAPI screen or as a drop-down list. For questions with up to 24 choices, you can use either buttons or a drop-down. 
but if your question has more than 24 cho choices, you must use the drop-down list format. You'll assign each response a text label and numeric value in the code item window and text entered in the description box will be the value label and the code value is automatically generated starting with zero but you can change that if you prefer. In contrast to some other response types, responses for pick one items are saved into a single variable. The numeric value is the one specified in the code value box as displayed in the item column. In this example, selecting 6 to 30 minute response would result in a numeric value of 2 being written out to the data set. As mentioned for a pick one item, for questions with fewer than 24 response choices, they'll be displayed as cappy buttons if the use drop down list was unchecked. However, if you do check that option, Responses will be displayed as a drop-down list, and this can be very useful when you have long response text. Next, if you have questions where respondents will be able to choose more than one response, you'll use the Check Each Response type. It allows up to 24 category choices in either CAPI or ACASI, but it can be unlimited in QDS Web. Each response option will have an individual variable associated with it where 1 is the value for checked and 0 for not checked. On the Response Set tab, options include whether or not to allow or disallow special codes, and then each response choice is entered into the description of category box, and variable labels for each choice are entered under the Check Item Box description field. This is the one exception where we recommend changing the default branching behavior from default for element to disallow. This is a best practice to assure a respondent selects at least one choice. Check each type variables also have composite and component variables, as did the date and time span types. The composite variable is a count of the number of selected options and it matches the name on the data element tab. There is a component variable for each response choice. The variable name for each includes the letter suffix as shown in the item column and each variable's value will be 1 if checked and 0 if not checked. For this example, if you had a question asking which of the following books have you read where books is the variable name, and then you selected choices A, C, and D as shown by the check marks here, then in the save data, the composite variable books would be equal to 3 because 3 items were checked. Variables A, C, and D would be equal to 1 because those choices were checked. The other choice B would be equal to 0 because it was not checked. For questions where you would like for respondents to be able to rank more than one response, you can use the ranking type. It includes multiple response options and respondents can rank just some or all. Like check each, multiple variables are created. The composite variable is a count of how many items were ranked and the component variable indicates the entered ranking for each response option. On the response set tab, options include Entering choices in the description of category and rank item boxes, this is very similar to how it works for check each type. Also indicate your special codes that are allowable. And then options unique to ranking type are to set the maximum and minimum number to be ranked. For example, you might require for respondents to rank only their top three choices. The numeric rankings you assign will be displayed in the boxes to the right of the choices. To assign rankings, click on the responses in order from low to high. And as you do that, 
rankings are automatically assigned and after an item is ranked it is grayed out. The next question button is not enabled until the number of items that were specified to be ranked in the Design Studio settings are complete. And you can always use the clear button or click on the highest ranked item to change the rankings. It's often convenient to use a response card for response sets that will repeat across multiple questions. You can use these for pick one, check all that apply, numeric scale, and ranking types. It's also useful to copy them to use in other Design Studio files. To create a response card, go to Tools, Response Cards from the menu, or select Response Card from the toolbar. Click the Add button to create a new card and enter a name and an optional description. That's just for programming use. Next, pick the radio button for the type of response you would like to create. And then in the description of category box, add your responses to define the response set. This is just as you would for those types. The one response type that differs a bit when using a response card is numeric scale. When you use a response card, you can also label intermediate points. You can enter only the points you wish to be labeled. For example, you can add a label for just a midpoint. Note that you will set the tick marks and numbering on the response set tab. To assign a response card as the response type on the data element tab, select response card from the drop down and then select the name to use from the box. This is where it's helpful if you use a name and description that makes sense for your survey and select OK. Note that response cards must be created before they can be selected. Next, a brief overview about using calculated variables in your survey. Automatic variable elements use a built-in QDS library of numeric and string functions. They are output in the save data set and are purple in the element listing. To create a calculated variable, first insert it as you would other element types. Enter a variable name and label, and these will be saved in your exported data set. Select type of data to be stored from the drop down menu. Note there is also a checkbox option to exclude the variable from a warehouse manager export. You might want to do that if it will only be used during the interview. However, note that these variables are always saved into the data set. For example, to create a calculated variable to store the current date, select today's date in the drop down and enter your variable name and label. Note that the date is taken from the interview device's system date. You can also create current time and elapsed time variables based on the system date and time. To create a calculation that will store a number, select Numeric Calculation from the drop-down and enter your variable name and label. Then enter a formula in the Numeric Calculation slash String Expression box. Note that you can reference any variables so far encountered in the element listing using QDS functions and syntax. This example will save the sum of four variables var1 through var4. To create a calculation that will store text, select string expression from the type of data to be stored, enter your variable name and label, and once again enter your formula in that same box. With this type of calculated variable, you can substitute text based on responses to previous questions. For example, you could substitute text for him, her, or them, depending on response to a gender item. In your questionnaire design, you will sometimes need to build in conditional branching patterns so that given certain responses, the user can skip over one or more items later in your questionnaire. 
The first recommended way to do this is with skip instruction elements. These allow you to specify a conditional branching in the flow and they are orange in the element listing. For example, you might have a leading question regarding cigarette use asking, have you ever smoked a cigarette? This is a yes, no type question that also allows responses of don't know or refused. If the response was not yes, that is no, don't know, or refused, then a follow-up question about how many cigarettes smoked should be skipped over. However, if the response is yes, that follow-up question should be asked. To add these, first insert a skip instruction element in your listing. Next, enter the condition to be tested in the if box. Note that you don't need to include the word if in the expression. You can also just leave the box blank if the skip should always occur. Then we need to tell QDS how many items we need to skip over for this condition. In the branch to box, select the number of elements to skip over, which can be one to five elements or skip to a marker, which we'll be learning about next. However, note that every element except for comments will always count, not just data elements. And you can generally leave the other options at their default settings. A few notes about using QDS syntax which will apply to any type of expression for automatic variable, skip instruction, or edit elements. Questions are referred to by variable name. References to text strings require quotes. You can use regular arithmetic and equality operators. One operator that's different from some other syntax languages to make a note of is to use the caret symbol for not. For example, this is indicating to skip if a variable named race is not equal to four. Similar to other programming software, you can use and, or, and not in combination in your expressions. For example, this indicates to skip if var1 equals to one and var2 is greater than four. For this example, we'll show how to skip over the how many cigarettes did you smoke item if the response to the leading question was no. In the if box, enter the condition sig equals to zero, where sig is the variable name for our ever smoked question and zero is a response of no. In the branch to box, select skip one element from the drop down. Leave the other items at their default setting and click OK. In the listing, you'll see the new orange element added, indicating that the item for number of cigarettes smoked in the past seven days will be skipped for the condition of sig equals zero. Note that a unique item identifier will be assigned after validation, which we'll talk about shortly. To refer to special codes in any type of QDS expression, you should use the following constants. DK for don't know, dot REF for refused, dot NA for not applicable, dot SK for skipped, dot MSG for missing. For example, SIG equals zero or SIG equals dot DK or SIG equals dot REF F would indicate to skip if our cigarette question was zero, don't know, or refused. Keep in mind that it's always very important to consider special codes when setting up any logical condition. Sometimes rather than skipping a specified number of elements, it's better to specify a destination point for a branching instruction. You'll do this by using a marker element and note that you must use a marker if skipping more than five elements. And they are aqua in the listing. First, insert a marker element at the destination point. 
Enter the name and note that it must be unique and limited to eight characters. You can also enter a description, but that's optional. Note that markers do not appear out of the Design Studio. They're only for internal programming use. To apply the cigarette section example to using a marker, we'll update our skip pattern. If the response is yes to ever smoked, the respondent will proceed. However, if they respond no, don't know, or refused, then they'll skip to the marker at the beginning of the next section, and it would look like this in the element listing. Note, if you're skipping over multiple items, it's generally best to use a marker element. If you add more questions, such as more items about cigarettes as shown here, the destination will still be the same marker. The next way you can control branching is to use edit elements. With these, you can specify a conditional branching to go forward or backwards in the questionnaire flow or link to another file or survey. And we'll go through the specifics of each of these options. Edit elements are read in the listing. First, insert an edit element as you would other element types and then enter the logical condition to be tested. Note that you'll use the same type of syntax as you would for skip elements. And these are very useful for testing for inconsistencies between responses. Additional options for edit elements include to display a message when the condition evaluates to true, if you prefer, you can also check the Perform Without Message box to have an edit without a message. Next, you'll select the Reconciliation process from the drop-down box to do when the condition is true. The first choice is No Further Special Processing. This will provide a message only. You can think of this as a warning, but the respondent is allowed to proceed. Next, you can do reconciliation elements follow this. You can think of this as if a condition is met, then do additional items. This works like a skip, but can be easier to program for some conditions. The next choice is loop back to prior element. This is used to go back and resolve an inconsistency in responses. You can also edit to launch another CAPI or ACASI control file or link to an external file or URL. The loop back reconciliation option is used to reconcile an inconsistency. To use our cigarette section example, we have a question asking about how many cigarettes did you smoke yesterday? And we need to make sure that number is not greater than how many were smoked in the past seven days. So to do this, we'll add an edit element right after question number three to display a message and loop back to elements. If the response to question three is greater than the response to question two, if it doesn't evaluate to true, then the respondent will proceed it will look like this in the element listing. The edit line lets us know that it's looping back two elements. One additional tip, you can also loop back to a marker if needed. The reconciliation elements follow option is used as an alternative to a skip instruction. To use our cigarette section example again, we can replace the skip after have you ever smoked a cigarette with an edit element. Instead of saying to skip if ever smoked was no, don't know, or refused, we can say instead to ask the following questions until the next section if ever smoked was yes. To do this, an edit element is added after question one to do elements until the marker for question one equals yes. If the condition does not evaluate to true, then the respondent will proceed. It would look like this in the element listing. Note that the edit line indicates that it's doing elements until the marker only if the variable sig equals 1. 
The Launch Another Control File Reconciliation option is used to conditionally start another survey. For example, you might have a screener survey that determines if someone is eligible to continue to the main survey if screener criteria were met. As with other types, you will enter a logical condition and optional message. On the Launch tab, enter a file name for the control file to be launched. Don't enter the directory or file extension. For example, to launch a control file named health.qpi, just enter the word health. The secondary file must be in the same folder as the primary control file, and it is recommended to check the Save Current Interview box to save the current interview before launching the second file. Also on the Launch tab, you can choose up to 10 variables to pass to the secondary survey by checking those in the Shared Variables box. Note that identifier variables are always shared and are not counted in the 10 variable limit. After you've completed selecting your variables, click OK to return to the element listing. It will then indicate that, in our example, the Health Cafe survey will be launched if a variable named screener is equal to 1. Note that if you look back, you can always see which variables are chosen beneath the Shared Variables box. The link to a file or URL reconciliation option is used to connect to either a website or to a file. For example, you might have a respondent link to a website for additional information or to a video file. You do need to enter the URL or full file name, including the extension. Note that all linked files must reside in a single folder that is specified under Build Options, External Files, Directory for Linked Documents. And in the element listing, it indicates to link to the external file in this example if a variable named health was equal to 1. Next, we will take a look at questionnaire build options. It's important to always set build options for any data collection method or documentation type. These are set in the Design Studio prior to building. For building a copy survey, you can modify display, such as layout, font, or color, input support, such as whether or not to allow keyboard use, locations for referenced files, such as images or linked documents, date and time formats. Available options vary based on data collection method or documentation type. You can access build options at any time by going to Options Build from the main menu. From there, select the desired product such as copy or codebook. Click the plus to expand options and then select the category to view or modify. It's important to note that build options are updated when the control file is rebuilt. They are language specific and they are saved with the control file. Some key CAPI build options to consider include saving interviews without prompting, automatically renaming data files for each interview, controlling display and entry format for dates, specifying fonts and colors used for display. Note that there are many more options available that can be helpful to customizing administration. Next, we will go through some tips regarding testing your specifications. During the process of designing your survey, it's important to validate your elements frequently. This checks your survey for errors, for example, missing or duplicate variables. Go to Tools, Validate from the menu, or click the Validate Elements button. Errors will be displayed in a new window. Double-clicking on the error line will take you to the element with the error if possible. Once you've validated your file and it's free from errors, you can still test that file, particularly the skips, edits, and automatic vari variable elements to make sure they're all working as you intend. 
One method for doing this is to use the Preview tool, which is a CAPI or ACASI emulator to preview a specified section. Note that you don't need to have CAPI or ACASI installed as it's run from within the Design Studio. With it, you can specify test values for earlier data elements, specify an interview date for testing, review entered data during or after preview, and save entered responses in a delimited text file. To launch the preview tool, first highlight one or more elements, go to Tools, Run Preview, or use the keyboard shortcut of F5. Then the preview tool will launch onto the first data element or information screen highlighted. Note that you do always need to highlight at least one data or information element. A key advantage to using preview mode is that you can set test values for questions prior to the highlighted section which streamlines testing. To set test options, you can go to Options Data Default Test tab where you can set all data elements with a certain response type to a single value, such as setting all yes-no type items to no. Alternately, and what is more useful, is to set an individual test value for a data element on the Test tab for that question. Note that options on the test tab vary by response type. There are a few considerations to keep in mind. First, if current test values would cause the entire highlighted section to be skipped, an error message will be displayed. You can adjust your test values and rerun. Next, if current test values cause only part of the highlight section to be skipped, the Design Studio will issue a warning message. You can continue or adjust your test values and rerun. To set build options for preview mode, go to Options, Preview, General tab. You'll want to indicate either CAPI or ACASI mode of interview. You can indicate if you would like for preview to ignore preceding skips and edits. This is useful to view how a question is being displayed or if you want to test something late in the survey but earlier skips or edits might cause the section to be totally skipped over. However, you do need to be careful using this option because it can result in impossible scenarios. You can also specify an interview date through the calendar interface. This option allows you to set the date that should be considered the current date for the preview session, such as as for the today's date in automatic variables. This is very convenient for tests relating to date so that you can change the date here rather than on your device. You can check the Append Variable Name option to view variable names on the screen during preview, which is useful for testing and review. Next, we'll go to the Log tab. This is where you can turn on the option to save responses entered in preview mode at any time into a comma-delimited file that can be brought into any spreadsheet program. To enable this option, check the Produce Preview Session log box, then all option fields become enabled. You must enter a directory for the log file or use the Browse button to select a directory. The default name for the log file is Survey Name plus Language plus Preview plus Test by default, you may change this by entering a new name in the box, which will be updated the next time you open Preview Options. Finally, you need to select one or more variables in the box that you would like saved to your log file. Note that it contains all variables since the last validate, and you must select at least one. You can use the All button to select all variables or highlight multiple variables and use the Include Exclude buttons. And you may include variables outside of the preview section, in which case it will be using specified test values. Note that QDS will prompt you regarding renaming an existing log file if you modify the checked list of tracked variables without changing the log file name.
You can view data at any time during preview session by going to Preview Response Values from the menu in CAPI or by using the keyboard shortcut of Control R in either CAPI or CASI. Note that since there's no menu in ACASI mode, you can only use keyboard shortcuts there. In addition, at the end of the preview session, it will always ask you if you wish to view response values before terminating. When the response values box opens, it shows columns for variable names, question numbers, labels, the code and display values for responses, as well as minimum and maximum values. Those show the allowable range, for example, if a special code such as refused was the response. Note that you can see data for all questions in the survey prior to the highlighted section. For those, you see assigned values from the Test tab for those data elements. Click on any column heading to sort data. If you need to quickly and easily find a specific question, you can enter that in the Find What box. Alternately, you can also find by question number. Very convenient for long surveys. Then select OK to exit response values. Next, we'll do a demonstration of how to use preview mode. We'll use preview mode to test out a few skips, edits, and a calculated variable in our small sample survey. We're going to start out by taking a look at what we want to test. And in our sample survey, we have a demographic section and we ask for date of birth. And based on that, we have a calculated age variable. And then we have some additional demographics questions. Followed by that, we have the tobacco section, which we did some demonstration on setting that up in the webinar so far. We have that lead-in question of have you ever smoked a cigarette, followed by a skip indicating that respondents will skip to the next section, the health section, if cigarette use was not equal to one or not yes, followed by questions about how many cigarettes they'd smoked yesterday and in the past seven days. And as we set up in the webinar, we have an edit element to check to make sure that the yesterday number was not greater than the past seven days. And followed by that, we've actually added an additional edit to check that the age that they smoked their first cigarette is not greater than their current age. We want to check all of these branchings out in preview mode. To get started with that, we do want to set up our preview options and test values. So we'll start out by going to Options, Data Default, and then we'll go to the Test tab. This is where you can set options for any response type. So we could set, say, all of the yes, no items to be yes. We could set all of the pick ones to be the midpoint value. Again, that is can be somewhat useful depending upon your survey. But what's even more useful is to go to a specific item. Here we're going to go to our date of birth question and we'll open that up and then we'll go to the test tab. And then here, depending on the response type, you'll have different options for a date. If we want to put in a specific date, we'll choose Specify from the drop-down. And when we do that, it opens up the boxes for where we can put in values. We're going to put in the year 2000 and a month and a day. And we're going to set this so for our calculated age variable, it will calculate that to be 20 years of age. And that's something we can also check when we do preview mode. Next, we need to set our options for the preview session. To do that, we'll go to Options from the main menu and then select Preview. By default, CAPI is selected under Mode of Interview, so we'll leave that at the default setting. The next option is to ignore Skip and Edit Instructions. We're not going to use that in this particular demo, so we'll leave it unchecked. We will use the calendar interface to select 
a preview date and we'll do June 1st. Again, remember it's just much more convenient if you want to do anything date-based testing to set it here rather than on your device. And we'll check append variable name to question text as that's also very useful for review. Then to go to the log tag, we do want to save our testing to a preview session log. So we'll check the produce preview session log first and that will open up all of these other boxes. We've already set our directory. Just you can set the browse button to find a directory on your computer. Under log file name, the default is just the word test. If you would like to change that to something more specific for your survey test, uh, we'll change it to tobacco for this. Now you need, do need to select what variables you would like to track or what variable data you would like to be saved into that log file. Check subject and gender and date of birth and age. And then we'll go down and we want to select the entire cigarette section. So we'll highlight them and then select the include button and that will check an entire group. And then once we're done with that, we'll click OK. Now we're ready to start our preview session. So we'll go to tools and then run preview. And remember that you can also use the keyboard shortcut of F5. When preview mode first opens, it'll be on the first item that was highlighted, which here was, have you ever smoked a cigarette? And since we did enable the option to show variable names, you can see that here right after the question text in curly brackets, CIG. We'll start out by testing the skip after this item. So we'll say no, and that will jump us to our first health section question. And we'll go back, and since we said if it was anything other than yes, it would skip. So we'll also then check out a response of don't know. And again, that takes us to our health item. So we'll go back again. And at this point, we do want to save that test that we just conducted to our common delimited log file. So we're going to go to preview and choose the update log choice. Again, we could also use a shortcut of control L. When we do that, it will let us know that these response values have been added to the file. Now we're going to go ahead and say yes to proceed through our cigarette questions and we're going to say we smoked five cigarettes in the past seven days. Then we get to the how many cigarettes did you smoke yesterday item. Now remember we have an edit after that and we're going to want to trigger it. So we're going to say six and it will let us know you reported smoking more cigarettes yesterday than in the past seven days and that was the edit message that we had specified in our edit. So we'll say OK and now we will change that to a five that we smoked yesterday, so it should not trigger the edit. And it doesn't, and we continue on. Next, we have a question asking how old were you the first time you smoked a cigarette? And as you recall, uh, we set up our age item so that it would be um, age equals to 20 um, based upon the date of birth. So we're going to go ahead and put in 21 and that does trigger the edit as we set it up. So that was a good test and we'll click OK. Now if we want to go ahead and look at those responses and see how that looks, we can go to Preview, Response Values, and that'll bring up the box. And again, you can see the variable names there and question numbers labels and the code values. And you can see here we just entered a cigarette age of 21. And if we go down to the end, this is where you can see where we have our date of birth item that we set to be the year 2000 and the month and the day. Now the reason that these component variables are at the end is because they are components as we mentioned earlier. We also have some race components for a check each question also here. Remember components are always at the end of the element listing. 
or the variable listing in the response values. And if we go back up to the beginning, we can see that date of birth item. And this is where we did set up the test value to be 314-2000. So after we've reviewed our response values, we'll go ahead and say OK. And now we're going to go ahead and enter a number for this item that will not trigger the edit and select next question. And then we'll answer the next couple of items in our cigarette section and finish that up. And at this point, we finished and so it asks us if we want to review response values before terminating. So we're going to say yes, we want to take a look at those again. And now if we go back up, we can see that updated age that we entered of 15 for age first smoked. And you can see our other responses. Now if we want to add these updated responses to our log, we can say update log the button here or update log with notes. We're going to go ahead and do that and we're going to add a note that indicates this was a smoker age 20 and we'll say we're going to add that to the log and it will let us know that that was successful and we'll click OK. Next, we'll take a quick look at our preview log file. When we open it up in a spreadsheet program, you can see that it's comma delimited. And in most spreadsheet programs, you can simply do text to columns or something similar and make sure that comma is specified as the delimiter. After doing that, you can see each of the variables in its own column. All of the variables prior to the section that we used in the preview are set to the test default, such as zero for subject identifier, and as we specified on the date of birth test tab, 3-14-2000 for the birth date, which calculated to 20 for age. And then you can see the responses that we entered in the two test runs that we did in preview. And as mentioned before, the component variables are listed at the end, which here were the date of birth, year, month, and day variables. If you enter notes, which we did in the second test run, they are listed in the final column as shown here, where we indicated that that was a test run for a smoker of age 20. And that just briefly shows you how using the preview mode works. If you need additional information or help on any of these topics, QDS has multiple help resources available for all users. First, always feel free to contact support at novaresearch.com with any QDS technical support questions. On our website, you can find the QDS online help as well as video tutorials on a variety of topics from programming in the design studio to working in the warehouse manager. FAQs and some sample files are also available on the website. Thank you for your continued support of QDS.